And welcome back into the Don Bullock Chevrolet Morning Show, the best talk show on local television. And we are joined in our final segment by Gene Allman and Dr. David McChesney. Now, Dr. David, uh, you are with, uh, what do you want me to call you? Uh, what would you like to call me? Uh, <laughs> David is fine. <laughs> okay, David. Uh, you are with the uh, Tar River Orchestra, and you guys have a big performance coming up soon. We do. I think uh, last week, I'm very fortunate, I'm the principal trumpet in the Tar River Philharmonic, and I think Dr. Sturgis was here last yes. week, mm -hmm. and he had an opportunity to come in and talk to folks about what was prepared and what we played last week. Uh, coming up this Thursday is the Tar River Symphonic Band concert with our How the West Was Won program. Which will be really high energy, right? And absolutely, absolutely. We've got some wonderful film scores uh, that, are, that we've had the opportunity to put together with some great colleagues. I think we'll, we'll be visiting Silverado, the fictitious town of Silverado, a, a very fictitious place out in Montana where the Ludlows and Legends of the Fall. Of course, we will be visiting Tombstone. I've noticed that the, we've been pushing Tombstone a lot, uh, both uh, over the internet and on the television. Mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful film score. And then, of course, we'll finish up, I think, the first half with a work by John Williams and the Cowboys, which uh, featured John Wayne. David, we have we are very we are unique in this area to have such a plethora of really live dynamic um, performing groups aren't we I mean th for a town the size of Rocky Mountain of course we draw from surrounding areas but tell everybody why we are so fortunate to have this and what it means to our community well I have had the opportunity to be involved with the great people here in Rocky Mount actually going all the way back to when I was in high school uh, J.C. Sykes and the wonderful works that was done here, uh, again with Hardee's. Uh, we were here both as a student when I was in high school and around a bunch of wonderful musicians. And then again when I was teaching in Wilmington, North Carolina, we would bring our groups up here to perform as part of the North Carolina Band Festivals. Uh, when I moved back here in, in 96, I began to be involved with some folks down here in uh, Rocky Mount. And there was just this real core of people, wonderful people, excellent musicians, and committed to their community and bringing live music. Mm -hmm. And so I was very fortunate to be a part. I think I spent a, probably about five or six years as the solo cornet in the Tar River Symphony Band uh, before they asked me to take over the baton. So I think it, it's an a, incredibly unique uh, in that we have a lot of very local uh, very good local talent, uh, and then we bring in people from East Carolina University and from Wilson and from uh, areas up in Durham, uh, University of North Carolina, uh, faculty there as well, and then we put our concerts together. So what kind of started as the swing band to, to take advantage of J.C. Sykes and a lot of his, his um, peers who really loved to play and, and wanted that great outlet to continue playing? has evolved in, I think there's seven groups now. Oh. Well, the, the Swing Band uh, is a wonderful group. Uh, Dan Crocker, Bill Bowles, uh, William Austin, uh, those are all people that also perform in the Symphony Band as well. Uh, actually, Reese Adams, who helped mm -hmm. set up uh, mm -hmm. our work this morning uh, as a trombonist. I've had the opportunity to play with the Swing Band as well. But I think it was that kind of core group of people that really wanted to have something happen. Um, and continue to happen here in the area. And I just think it speaks to what the community was used to. Mm -hmm. I think it speaks to what the community was interested in having. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the vision of some other people here in the community, the board uh, of the Tar River Orchestra and Choral Society. For regular season ticket holders, they're, <clears throat> they're excited about this. And you've got one in the this, this, um, fall and again in the spring. But make the compelling case to people who have not been before what they will feel, what the difference will be for being able to go to how the West was won and when they leave, how will, how will their lives be better because of it? Well, I think the thing you want to be thinking about is that if you could just imagine the opportunity to see some of your friends, some people that you know, people that you go to church with, uh, and see those people performing some really good repertoire at a very high level, mm -hmm. uh, it just, there's nothing like live music. Mm -hmm. uh, Love It Live is an incredible statement about what we'd like to be doing with the organizations. There are, I believe, five at this point. We have, of course, the, the mm -hmm. band. 
uh, we'll be playing. We have the Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm -hmm. We have an adult group. Uh, we have a children's group. And we have the swing band. I'm not sure. Right? The, the chorus, the Philharmonic, the Symphonic, the Swing, the Children's Chorus, and the Youth Strings Program. Right, and now the Youth Strings okay. Program as well. That's phenomenal for us, isn't it? All under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. One organization committed to doing all these things uh, for the community, within the community. Uh, interestingly enough, we've all spent time with our cell phones. We all spend time with CDs. We all spend time looking at things on YouTube. But there really isn't anything mm -hmm. like a live performance. Mm -hmm. To hear it and to feel it live. Uh, interestingly enough, I appreciate you calling me Dr. McChesney. Most people don't want to do He's that at times. He's that young he enough feels to go Dr. <laughs> McChesney. Uh, but my doctoral research and dissertation uh, were actually involved the idea of how important it was uh, it was about trumpet players, and most of the people will remember Doc Severinsen, maybe there was another gentleman named Rafael Mendez before, and they were electric in performance, mm -hmm. and that's what brought people out. Mm -hmm. And so if I had one thing that I would really hope would be that you would come out and have an opportunity to hear what people in this area, and with in combination, in consort with others, uh, the idea of live music. Uh, when I give that downbeat, it, mm -hmm. it's an amazing sound that mm -hmm. comes off. Uh, it's very exciting for me. Uh, uh, again, just last week, I'm sitting at the back of the orchestra playing, uh, and now trumpet, to be right. playing the trumpet. And then this this week, I'm standing in front of the group, uh, and it's the best seat in the house, mine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would encourage you to come out and, and visit us and come to the Dunn Center. It's a wonderful venue, mm -hmm. uh, and they do a great job for us. And Very think, reasonably priced, too. I mean, I think a season ticket is like $65 for everything, which is six performances, I believe, and it, it's 12 if you buy one at a time. But I want to say as a, a parent, this is a gift to children. This is a chance to teach them about music, and I think... So much, of, I hear parents say, boy, the music my kids listen to, woo, not mm -hmm. so good. But this is quality music. This is, this is music that inspires. It's not lyrics about doing bad things and whatnot. This is, is elevating music, isn't it? And, and it's just really good to expose your children. I even hear with babies, if, if parents play this kind of music to babies, it helps build brain cells and connections. Well, I think it's been well established that uh, having your students involved in the fine arts and having your students involved in, in music from a very young age is going to help that right and mm -hmm. left brain connection. Mm -hmm. It really does help students understand and problem solve and lets them use their imaginations as well. But I think the idea of music that students uh, can relate to, the opportunity to hear some music, we know, I think we just heard the other day that there'll be another Star Wars movie. Did you yep. hear that? Mm -hmm. yep. that uh, there's going to be another Star Wars movie. And, and, and interestingly enough, we know that there were a number of students uh, that play today that were inspired by hearing those first mm -hmm. scores really? from mm -hmm. Star Wars. And so the reason that connects with what we'll be doing is that we are bringing these award-winning music scores from the films mm -hmm. off of the screen uh, and into the concert hall. And so it gives you the opportunity to hear, to your point, mm -hmm. very good music. There's always going to be a real noble theme, a real majestic theme. You know, you'll, in this case, someone riding in on a horse, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gunfights at, you know, Tombstone. But there's always the, the loving uh, melody, the women in the mm -hmm. scenes, uh, just some beautiful lyric lines. Uh, and it is something that I think touches children of all ages and parents. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we talk about, you know, some of the challenges with younger folks, and I feel awkward saying that, but, <laughs> you know, to us, you know you are. With, with like an iPod. I mean, a lot of kids honestly think that music is just generated, that it doesn't take work, that it doesn't, it's not a team effort, and that it just comes from a box, and mm -hmm. it's just something that's produced. But it's so great when you can go to a live performance like this, and you can feel a story unfold when all that you, when it's all what you're hearing and all what you're feeling, mm -hmm. and 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 it's such a different connection, and it's so good for for kids to see that because there's so many options for them now. But 
music is something that is a lot of times left on the back burner. It's exposing them to that just right. does so much for them. And the teamwork that goes into it and then the develop, development that goes into it the, for them as well is so important. Right. You know, I think it's interesting. We think of a compressed digital file, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's an iPod. Mm -hmm. And then it pops open and you hear it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does sound good. And you do enjoy it. But I think it's missing that personal human mm -hmm. connection. Again, that's the wonderful part, I think, for this particular organization. We've had the opportunity to connect with people in Rocky Mount mm -hmm. because it makes sense for them to come and see their friends, mm -hmm. right? There's a connection, mm -hmm. the, the viability of it. Uh, and that's what even makes it even more exciting. When you go and see your teacher or your doctor, mm -hmm. uh, the person who helps you with your cell phone uh, up there and, and performing. Uh, but it is that collaborative spirit of watching everybody work together and realizing that music can come out of a box, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like Love it live. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we've done a spot for the group based on this. And people came out of our concert, the orchestra concert, uh, last week and were just excited about, wow, I had no idea it was going to be this powerful. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. And it goes by fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are three in the fall, I think, and three in the spring. The holiday one, I believe, is November 30th coming yep, the up. The children's course is coming up. But this one is number two, again, this Thursday at this the Dunn Center. What time does it start? Do 7.30. 7.30, okay. So people probably need to, to get there and be in their seats. Yeah, you don't have to have a ticket now. Right. If you, mm -hmm. you want to show up, it, you know, mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be tickets at the door. We'd love to have you. Uh, handicap access, of course. There's beautiful, wonderful lighting. Great facility. You've got a wonderful facility. And the Symphonic Band's also opening up the 2013 uh, year with the next set of performances. Right, March. we'll be going to Italy in March, okay. as a matter of fact. <laughs> yes, we're going to Italy. So we'll be doing I mean, symbolically <laughs> going right to in the Italy. Dunn yes. Center. We're going to take off. Yes, we're going to be doing some Italian marches. Uh -huh. uh, we'll be doing some of the great overtures from uh, from the operas, uh, and we're going to be doing a piece that actually depicts uh, a volcano exploding mm -hmm. called Vesuvius. And for us not to have to go, you know, drive an hour each Raleigh. way and right. whatnot, to be able to, to bring it right here. And it's dependent upon all of us supporting it and going out there. And again, very reasonably um, priced to be there. But I encourage people to make it a family event. They're not, I mean, people will say there aren't that many family events. Well, this is one of the true yeah. gems that we have here in the Rocky Mount area that people can do. That. You're a teacher. Um, in fact, you drove over from Raleigh this morning. I did. But make that commitment to come and, and support and, in fact, conduct and play in our, our um, Tar River Cor Chorus and Orchestra. 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 That's a mouthful. Orchestra and, <laughs> Orchestra and Chorus. Sorry. Tar River Orchestra and Chorus. Um, tell us what you see with kids and fine arts, and, and you alluded to that some, but it really is an important part of their education, isn't it? It, it really is. I mean, I think uh, I'm the director of fine arts at Ravenscroft School in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is an independent school. Uh, and for us, it's the opportunity for students to exercise their creativity. We feel like what we do is the hub of creative thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it all the time, and as you said earlier, it's, it's always about collaborative work. You know, these are 20th, 21st century skills, uh, working with each other. Uh, J.C. Sykes, again, I'll go back to J.C. J.C. used to say, I know that I'm giving the students an education. Mm -hmm. They're learning how to work together. They're learning that hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. And that's one side of it. But again, I think the other piece of it is, when you're engaging your creative mind, when you're engaging, engaging that right brain, uh, that's when you really can thrive. Mm -hmm. The problems of tomorrow will be solved by students of today doing jobs that we don't even know exist yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of being able to work together collaboratively, the idea of working, problem solving, and coming up with creative solutions is going to be much more valued. And so going and hearing a concert, being a part of this, being a part of your local organization, coming out and supporting, bringing the whole family, taking away what you can uh, from the music, having an opportunity to hear some foot tapping music. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked about the Old West, 
but the second half of the program will be a visit to the Shenandoah Valley and a wonderful mm -hmm. tune that everybody will remember. And then we'll be doing some jazz tunes done by an arranger, Sammy Nestico, uh, who arranged for the Count Basie Band. Uh, and then we'll be doing some music uh, that was brought back by Michael Buble. Uh, and so there'll be a lot of things that people will enjoy listening to. Uh, in, in, in addition to the movie scores that we'll be playing in the first half. But it's, it's such an important part having your students involved in the fine arts. We actually bring in all the students, the orchestra will bring all the students in. I think Al mentioned this in, in January. We typically bring the students in from all of the surrounding schools to mm -hmm. do a children's concert, have the recorders play or, and have the string players play. It's just an important part of their education. And spark that interest in wanting to play an instrument Absolutely. themselves too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know both my sons went through public school here and they both uh, insisted that they take a, an instrument, one played a trumpet and one played a trombone and they can read music. I mean they haven't pursued it but they have much greater appreciation for music and can read uh, music when they sing That's in church. It's a lifelong like, skill. It is. Singing it is. in the church choir, being a mm -hmm. part of your community. Speaking of the church, I do think we need to mention the McChesney name. I don't know if, if you're familiar with that, but James McChesney at First Presbyterian Church, and when I saw your name and that you were coming, I thought, there are, that's an unusual name. There are not that many McChesneys, but you are related to the, the beloved McChesneys that were in Rocky Mount for a while, weren't you? I am. Uh, that's my namesake, actually, uh -huh. uh, James uh, Jim. Mm -hmm. uh, and my grandfather uh, was a minister mm -hmm. uh, up in uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. and three of his sons followed in the profession. Uh, my father, Graham, who's uh, been in Durham and uh, the area and is actually still in the pulpit, and very active. Uh, Jim was the patriarch of the family. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the younger brother, uh, Charlie, uh, was involved in the church. Uh, and it's an, uh, it's an amazing thing. Uh, the scope of their reach is very, very wide. Mm -hmm. uh, the children have all been impacted. I come from a very, very large family. Uh, and we have an opportunity to get together every year. And uh, we would uh, kid uh, my uncle about the bust. Mm -hmm. he, there's actually a bust of Jim mm -hmm. uh, down at Presbyterian Church downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a wonderful church. And I believe it's McChesney Hall mm -hmm. where they, you know, they played basketball and, and have their uh, lunches or brunches or something after church. It's a beautiful church. And I have to think maybe the, the singing in church choirs and the exposure to that beautiful music in a church setting help engender some of the love of music. And a number of the people who are in the Tar River Orchestra are in, involved with First Presbyterian Church and other churches in town. Oh, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, typically our, our last choral concert mm -hmm. is downtown. Uh, First Baptist. In, in the Baptist right. Church. You know, beautiful big sanctuary that's really well suited for, uh, for congregational singing and for uh, events. And again, I think if we look at all the players from our local area uh, here that are involved in the ensembles, they are all people that play in church and sing in church. And it's just the wanting to have music in their communities. And uh, again, you know, Church Street. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of churches, there's a lot of people involved down there and a lot of wonderful musicians performing. People can call the Dunn Center box office, I would assume, to get tickets yep. for this. Yes. Um, $12, you can arrive that night, reserve one for yourself. Um, we prefer that people buy season tickets. I think it's $65 for all six events, which is just phenomenal. Is that what? Yes, yeah, 35 for many, many season, season tickets, which is half three a concerts. Because <laughs> the uh, Philharmonic's already been buy, so I'm sure there's a pro rate for that, but yet, yeah, uh, many season tickets. Three concerts, and from now to Christmas, I guess the um, November 30th, the holiday concert um, is one, and then for the spring, three more concerts. Yeah. Um, the Children's Chorus holiday concert will be the 30th, November mm -hmm. 30th. And that's at First Baptist as well. Okay. Oh, that'll yeah. just but be But you can beautiful. get your tickets at the Dunn Center for that, too. Oh, okay. So. Okay. And we, did have, we had a wonderful crowd. Um, last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, people are listening, mm -hmm. uh, they're tuning in, um, and they were turning out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're great and grateful to have the opportunity to come down and talk and, and visit here um, in the power plant here. I didn't, if somebody would have just told me <laughs> come to the power plant, I would have known exactly where to come uh, mm -hmm. driving by here all the time. But 
Uh, and these are familiar tunes too. I mean, even even Andrew, you probably recognized almost all of them. I mean, they're not just for absolutely. people middle aged and, and above. Well, no, you'll know Moon Dance and and uh, Save the Last Dance for Me. You'll know uh, A Night in Tunisia, the St. Louis Blues. Uh, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing, uh, and we'll be doing a version of Birdland. Again, these are very, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have heard all these tunes. I mean, that's one of the interesting things I think about when you go, they're, they're very, they're sticky. They <laughs> stick in your head, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when, you, mm -hmm. when we say, we, as I said, we open with Silverado, which is just this wonderful, uh, it's, it's just a great piece. I'm so yeah. excited to have the opportunity to conduct. It's, it's just a wonderful opportunity. Well, get out Thursday to the Dunn Center for the Tar River Symphonic Band. They will be uh, having a great performance. How the West was won, kicking off at 7.30, so please be sure to get out there and enjoy that. But for us, that's, uh, that's all our time today. Dr. McChesney, thank you thank for coming you. on today. Thank you. Really thank appreciate you. it. And Gene, thank you for sitting in with us this morning. So, Junior Winsett's coming up next, and remember, tune in tomorrow night for election coverage starting at 7.30. Uh, we will see you next time.